Hello everyone, it's great to be joining you for Carla 2020. My name is Susan Liddy and I'm a researcher and an activist. I lecture in the Department of Media and Communication Studies in MIC in Limerick, Ireland. I'm also chair of WIFT Ireland, chair of the Writers Guild Equality Action Committee and a board member of the recently established Raising Films Ireland. So I suppose it's no surprise that my research interests and publications are all to do with gender and the Irish and international industries, motherhood as it pertains to those industries, and the representation of older women, both on screen and behind the camera. I'm editor of the book that is being launched during Carla, Women in the International Film Industry, Policy, Practice and Power, published by Palgrave Macmillan. In this very brief presentation, I want to explain why I decided to put a book like this together. Uh, then I want to give you a quick overview of what's going on in Ireland. And finally, I'm going to offer three takeaways from my introduction to the collection, pulling together the strands that come through all the chapters. So first of all, why create a book like this? I felt it was, there was a need really for a comprehensive collection about women's struggle for equality in the contemporary international film industry. Of course, there's been some excellent scholarly work. Uh, done and it, 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 the trouble is that it's scattered and many people don't have access to the specialised journal that many of our researchers contribute to. So we do have industry reports, websites, social media, annual statistical information and all of that, which is really good, but maybe not quite as wide ranging as a collection like this can be. For instance, we know an awful lot about Hollywood and indeed Sweden too, maybe because of its trailblazing leadership, but maybe not so much about other parts of the world. So my hope is that, that this book will establish the range and scale of gender inequality and the urgency, or indeed lack of urgency, with which the issues are being addressed from country to country. I'm hoping that it will focus our mind to and our common experience, much of which sadly is a story of small gains, stalemate, rollback, as well of course as progress. I'm hoping it too it will build bridges, forge alliances and remind us that activists, researchers and practitioners may use a different language, but we all share a common vision and common goals and we must work together and strategize together for change. And lastly, I think what's important about this book is that it's a record of our ongoing activism because we have seen women's work and achievements lost to history many, many times before. This collection is just one attempt to make sure that what we're working so hard for today won't get lost in the mists of time. I'd like to speak to you a little bit about Ireland now. Like many places prior to 2015, the Irish film industry was unproblematically male dominated and this situation was mostly unacknowledged and unchallenged. I go into this in some detail in my chapter. There was no statistical data and of course that facilitated the avoidance of debate on gender issues. Funders didn't have to talk about the grim reality behind what they perceived to be a gender neutral position because there was no evidence to suggest that anything was amiss. So project-led development was deemed ungendered in a system that uncritically emphasised quality. This is one of the many reasons why the gathering uh, and publication of statistics, the more detailed the better, is crucially important, a point that Anna Cerner made effectively many years ago. But statistics can only give us part of the picture and my own qualitative research into the initial reluctance of Irish women screenwriters and writer directors to apply for funding, even when gender equality became a stated goal, is instructive. They talk about being sidelined and not seeing other women succeed and how this can have an impact on morale. They implicitly identify a gender order in play in which they don't feel valued. So I think it's a reminder to us of the need for proactive encouragement and support. And it's something that has emerged as a thread in a number of chapters. We can't blame individual women for systemic failure. And if there is an issue around the numbers of women applying for funding, it is up to the funding bodies, I, I think, to go to the bottom of why that might be. But on a brighter note, over the last five years, there has been a significant cultural shift in Ireland. Gender equality is spoken about, the industry discourse has been infused with it. The need for more women behind the camera, in key creative roles, the need for more women's stories and perspectives, all of that has been broadly accepted. Screen Ireland and the Broadcasting Authority of Ireland keep gender statistics now and have implemented policies and initiatives to stimulate change. And indeed, this has been reasonably successful as a starting point. 
but it is slow and it's uncertain if it's fully embedded in the industry. We are certainly not anywhere near 50-50. Some stakeholders, the Writers Guild of Ireland, Women in Film and Television Ireland and the Screen Directors Guild of Ireland are more engaged and welcoming of the process than others. I suppose the burning questions in Ireland at the moment is what do you do with stakeholders who resist change? And can public funders do even more? Because in order to create a root and branch systemic change, targets and low budget initiatives may not be enough. And finally, I would say that uh, issues of diversity and inclusion are coming very much to the fore in all of our debates, and it's going to be a much greater focus going forward. Moving now then to the global picture, which I cover in the introduction to the book, what are the recurring issues that emerge? So I'm going to offer you three takeaways uh, from the global picture. Number one, wherever you look, women are still underrepresented in the film industry, whether that be screenwriters, directors, producers, cinematographers, editors or crew. They're less likely to be funded and when they are, they get less money. In places where there has been change and, you know, there, there, that is happening all over the world, it still has been slow. Researchers, unfortunately, paint a picture of continuing exclusion, small incremental achievements and reversals and a still um, a lack of transparency in decision making and of course a resistance to power sharing within the industry at times. The second thing, we have to work not just for gender equality but for a diverse industry. There will be and should be a far greater focus on intersectionality going forward. Thirdly, we need consistent and persistent global activism to continue. I think not only should it continue, but actually it needs to be cranked up because it's within our power to amplify gender equality issues and to keep them to the fore politically. Together, we need to find new ways to build on the gains that we've made already. And it's very important we don't lose our combined energy in the process along the way, because there's an urgency here to push forward before gender fatigue sets in, because it has in the past. And the momentum can be lost and we really don't want that to happen. So what I am finally saying to you is we need to work together to ensure there's absolutely no going back this time and that we all work hard together until we reach our goal. Thank you.